when when he appointed me to the board of commission, uh, when I went in, I asked the, uh, I had been telling my husband, it's ridiculous the way they treat people in the projects. They treat them like they're criminals. And uh, so when <laughs> Mayor Bradley's office called and he said, uh, his deputy said, the mayor want to appoint you to the board of commission for the housing authority. I said, well, I need to wait and talk to my husband. He said, work now. He said, what do you, she said, what do you mean it was a female? What do you mean? Talk to your husband. People who give their right arm to be appointed to this. And you talk about you. I said, let me tell you something. I live with my husband. I'm not going to take that much responsibility and not talk to my husband first. So if he want to appoint somebody else, fine. He said, well, I'll tell him what you, I'll tell him. And I don't think he's going to wait. I said, if he doesn't wait, that's fine. So he told him what I said. He called me back. He said, Amir said, whenever I'm ready, just let him know. So I talked to my husband, and he said, Honey, you've been talking about how they treat people. Maybe this is your turn that God has given you a chance to help them. So I said, Okay, I'll accept it if, it, if that's what you, if, if you feel that you don't mind my doing that much time. He said, No. Cause so that's when he appointed me to the board. And when I went on the board, I asked the chairperson, they had a man, Al Green. He was uh, chairperson of the Board of Commission. And uh, I asked him uh, how many commissioners go out into the project and meet with the people. He said, we don't go out into the project. I said, excuse me? Why? Why don't you go out to the project? He said, well, we just don't. We work from the office. I said, well, you've got a rebel on the board because I'm going to go out into the project and meet the people. I'm not going to sit here and vote on things that affect these people's lives, and I know nothing about them. So he said, well, I can't stop you from going out, but we just don't do that. I said, well, I'm going to do it because for my own sake. I have to be satisfied with what I sign and what I vote on. And he called me that night and he said, you know, I was thinking about it. And if you're willing to do this and meet with the people, then I'd like you to chair the Tenant Relations Committee. I'm going to set up a Tenant Relations Committee. And he said, would you chair it? I said, yes, I'll chair it. I said, I'll co-chair it because there was an elderly gentleman on there when I went on. I said, if you will name him the chair, I'll do the legwork because I don't want to disrespect him. He's been on here. He said, fine. So uh, I did started going out into the, the first time I went into the uh, Nixon Garden, which the police had told me, don't go in there without a police escort. escort. And I told the captain, if I have to go into the project with a police escort. I don't need to be on this board. So I set up a meeting the next few days with the tenants. And Nixon Garden Gymnasium was packed. It was full. <laughs> and for 30 minutes, they ripped me apart. They went up one side and down the other for me. I was scared to death. But I, you know, I make up my mind if I'm going to do something, I either have to face the fear or I'm not going to do it. And they said, oh, you commissioners don't do nothing but lie. You don't do nothing for us. You don't care about us and this and that. And I, for 30 minutes, I let them vent. And they rant. They they raved. And they, they said everything about the commissioners. And Claudia Moore, who lived in Nixon Garden, I never will forget that lady, she got up and she took the mic. She said, now, she's listened to you for 30 minutes. She came here to talk to us, and you're going to listen to her now. And I started talking. I was, I was so scared. My knees were shaking. But I said, well, it's now or never. So I told him, I said, let me, let me say a few things to you before I start talking about what I want to do. Number one, if you think every time I come in here for a meeting, you're going to use me as a whipping boy, you better think again. 
I said, and ask for what the commissioners didn't do, I can't answer for them. You have to ask them why they didn't do. I'm here because I want to make a difference. I want to change the way things are. And if we join hands, we can do that. But I am not going to stand here and let you rip me apart every time I come in here. We're wasting time. So I can go back to the office and sit in the office and do exactly what the other commissioners have done. And you can stay right where you are. Is it, are we, do we understand each other? <laughs> I was still scared. I said, because I don't have any reason to come in here and lie to you. If I'm not interested in doing things to change it for you, then I shouldn't be on this board. But I'm not going to come in here and fight with you every time I come in here. And one little man in the corner got up and he said, she's right. She didn't do this to us. And she evidently cares because she's coming out here to meet with us. No other commissioners ever met with us. And he said, you are going to listen to her. So I just told him, I said, you know, I want to, I, there's some changes I want to make, but I can't make them without you. I want to have it to where you can live with dignity. Living in public housing shouldn't be, uh, you shouldn't be treated like you're criminals. But that has to come from the board. The board sets the policy for the housing authority. So if you're willing to work with me and we join hands, we can change it. And we did. I set up a citywide tenant relations committee where the tenants had input, where they could bring their problems to the board to say what they needed and what they did, and be treated like adults. I said, I told the board, you can't treat people like children in the morning and adults in the evening. It doesn't work that way. You've got to give them responsibility all day long, and you've got to give them respect all day long. You can't treat them like their children and, and talk to them like they, I, I've never seen anything like that. So we started meeting with them and the tenant relations started having tenants come in and talk to us. And we organized citywide. There was a citywide tenant relations committee. And because I kept fighting to change it, we got it changed. We got it to where residents had, they had they could live in there with dignity. They couldn't even paint. The, if, if, if the door was messed up, they couldn't even repaint it. They got to wait for a week, two or three weeks for somebody to come. I said, this is ridiculous. Let them take pride in where they live. While they're here, this is their home. It should be treated like their home. So I went to um, the, the city, the, the housing authority, said, we don't have the money to do it. I said, Will you allow the tenants? Some of the tenants really was upset because they, the frames around the doors needed paint. I said, if I get the paint, will you allow them to do it? Well, they had never done that before, but they allowed them to do it. <laughs> and I said, as far as we're paying people millions of dollars to come in and do things that the tenants can do for themselves. As a matter of fact, I said, you know, some of the things that we, we're taking away from other programs when we could be assisting the, the temp. Anyway, a long story short, we started beautifying the place and started, and they started planting little plants and doing things that said, this is home. You know, you can't, the quickest way in the world to me, I was taught that, the quickest way to destroy people is do everything for them. Give them no responsibility, no authority, no, no, treat them with less dignity than, than they, anybody else and make them feel inferior and you destroy that person. So I really started fighting HUD because at that time, HUD would not allow the housing authority to hire residents. And I said, that's the most <coughs> stupid thing I've ever heard. We're paying people to come in here and do simple jobs that residents could do. And they're watching these people get paid and they can't earn enough money to buy milk for their children. And they said, well, they don't want to work. I said, how do you know? Have you offered them a job? 
how did how dare you make up your mind they don't want to work because that's what you think about them. 